Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And this podcast is going to be devoted to how we set our goals for 2024. So stay tuned for that. But now we got to talk about who's on the podcast for this roundtable podcast. We have almost all the usual suspects. We've got Dude Buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman in the hizzle. Scott, how are you? Great, Mark. Good to be here. Good to see you. We've got Landon, AI Harris, the aquatic investor. Landon, how are things? Uh, things are great, Mark. No complaints. Good to, good to see you. We've got your better half, Taria, putting in the reps, Harris. Taria, how are things? Good to see you. Good to see you. We've got our newest roundtable member showing up, Herc Parrott. Kirk, we don't have a nickname for you yet, but we uh, will. I, I'm a little, I'm a little scared, but you know, I know this is this is that's the the right of initiation. I am good, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> good to see you. Good to see you, Eric, the technician Peterson, Sands Ribs. Eric, how are things? Things are good. Good to see you, Mark. Good to see everyone else. Awesome, and last but not least, I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield, Sin City. Tate, how's life? Busy as ever, but happy to be on the, the, the podcast today. Yeah. How are the Vegas Knights doing? We're good. Very, very good. You know, we're living up to the, the, the reputation of being a Stanley Cup championship team. So we're playing we well. Go. So when you have a year like that in 2023, that team's got to set big goals. For 2024. So this roundtable podcast is going to be our last podcast of the year. We're going to talk about how we think about 2023 and the goals and how we set our goals for 2024. And, you know, it's such a pleasure to have Dude Buddy lead us off with how he, set, he starts his 2024 goals. All right. Awesome. Um, so... The past few years, what I do this time of year is I wait. Is it, is it me? Okay, now I can hear you, Scott. Can you can you go is back better? and say that again? Yeah, yeah. So so I have a habit. The last few years of uh, I look back first to go forward, right? So I'm going to look at my number. I'm going to look where I was a year ago with certain things in my business. Um, you know, how many properties did we acquire last year? How much patchment income did we gain, right? How many cash deals did we do? All that stuff. Uh, personally, where was I a year ago with, you know, with working out? Where, I'm at, where am I now? And that's going to help me develop for the, the coming year. Uh, I want to see improvement in all of those areas, right? Um, I, I want to see continuous um, uh, personal improvement in my, in my life and relationships. And so, and I want to see business improvement. So I look at metrics. I look at, you know, uh, there's some quantity and quality stuff that we look at year to year, but, uh, I try what, what's interesting is when I look back at where I was a year ago, it gives me good perspective and helps me feel that I've really accomplished a lot. You know, if I look at my passive income today compared to where it was January 1st last year and see that it's grown this amount, I'm like, wow, that was a really good year. If it wasn't quite as good as I wanted it to be, then we tweak uh, for the next year and, and really focus maybe on an area that, that didn't gain so much ground. That makes sense. Totally makes sense. Totally makes sense. You know, I know I know Land is like, am I next? But no, we're we're mixing it up. <laughs> Kirk Parrott, how do you think about your 2024 goals? Yeah. Um, you know, uh for me it's a big one this time of year. My birthday is this time of year, so it's you know. Wrapping up the wrapping up the year, looking forward, then wrapping up the year as you know being alive and looking forward. And uh, it's interesting for me compared to you guys. Obviously, I'm, I'm much newer in the business, so you know a lot of my goals. Uh, I do the sim the, the same thing, looking back and first of all appreciating how far I've come because there's no doubt that I'm not where I want to be. All right, but because uh, where I want to be, that's is way bigger than where I am now. Um, but I want to make sure that as I am creating my goals, that I am also 
appreciating the journey and appreciating where I'm at because we have made, we've made progress. Now for me, I really am from a business perspective, I am looking to solidify the business more and build more structure into the business. Right. So um, as opposed to gr- going strictly for growth, I'm actually really going for a lot more for maintenance, stability, and, and, and streamlining. So I, I know that if I streamline my business, I streamline my processes, I, I, I knock out some inconsistencies and take myself out of the business more and more, I'm going to get that growth. And so that's where I'm, I'm really at. Like I'm really looking at going from a, from a toddler and crawling to, uh, you know, walking with confidence. Fantastic. Yeah. It's, I, 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 I love the way you approach that. Landon, AI Harris. How about, how about you? How are you going to set your 2024 goals? So like, you know, like Scott and like Kirk, um, we're, we're looking at the same things. Um, we're reviewing a lot of the metrics that we had from last year. Um, taking account for some of the goals that we had decided we wanted and how close did we get? Did we miss them? What were we doing with those? Um, and that goes with business and personal. I mean, we're, we're doing both of those. So we're really looking into those, but, um, one of the things that we, we, and we steadily do it. I mean, it's consistent. Like we're doing swim lanes. I mean, it's, it's one of those things you got to see where you are and what's missing and what holes need to be filled and what can we do better in? So we're, we're doing that since doing swim lanes, but then following that up, um, I always like to hit the ground running. So December is more of the month where it's foundational, like setting everything up because come January one, I want to be already moving forward, taking care of every little aspect that we had um, decided that we kind of wanted to move forward with. So it's more of like, this is the prep month. This is the prep month for 2024. So that's more of the, the big, big picture of it for us. Yeah. I mean, Taria is shaking her head because, you know, you you two do this together. Taria, is there, is there anything you want to add to that as well? And, you know, we were just at at dinner and, you know, Landon, no offense, but I know when it comes to the execution of it, it's probably Taria. (laughs) It's going to get to the the nitty nitty details of it. I like to direct. (laughs) <laughs> he's my supervisor um, so yes so we we sit down typically the day after christmas the month we're talking about it but generally the 26th we disconnect completely and we we sometimes go away last couple of years we've been tahoe where we just go up and talk about what we've done and things we want to accomplish. Um, and then, yes, this is where the spreadsheets come into play. The air tables come into play. So I begin formulating a strategy for implementing. And if we didn't sell as much as we wanted to last year, how do we increase sales next year? And, and what were our expenses? We like to look a lot at like our expenses and what's necessary moving into the next year. So same thing Landon said, we just kind of put it in motion to have it kick off in January, unless it's something like, oh, no, we need to do that immediately. But other than that, we plan for, we meet with our team um, and kind of give them the vision that we're going to set forth for next year. And so kind of a get everybody excited and then hit the ground running. I love it. I love it. Eric, the technician, I, I can imagine that you take a, a very systematic approach to your goal setting, perhaps, you know, maybe some air table sheets. Uh, yeah. So but, I think, yeah. first of all, I mean, everybody, what everybody has said is, is spot on, right? I mean, those are all things that, that most of us are doing. And I hope the listeners are also doing as they look forward to the next year. Um, I just might add, you know, I think uh, to, to elaborate on the comment about looking back to, uh, to plan ahead, right? Take, take the time to appreciate where you've come from, right? I mean, what, what have you created at this point? Even if it's a hundred dollars a month in passive income that you're at today, like you didn't have that before you started this. And obviously, you know, you have the tool set now to continue to grow that. So 
appreciate that because there's a lot of value in that, right? Like, yeah, it's, it's also important to set goals for future plans and where you want to be, but don't miss the fact that you got to where you are at this point in time. And I think on that very topic, um, the book, the gap and the gain by Dan Sullivan, um, is a great resource to, to kind of help you reframe some of that. And, uh, and again, just appreciate where you've come from and, and what you've achieved thus far. Um, and then, you know, I think beyond that, I think about, um, you know, what's next in terms of the year ahead, what not, not so much. I mean, certainly it's important to, to think about how many properties do I want to acquire? How many properties do I want to sell? You know, what passive income do I want to be at? All those things. I mean, those are, in my opinion, those are kind of obvious, right? But, but what's next in terms of technology, in terms of, you know, marketing trends and, and things of that nature, and what changes should we be thinking about or testing in our business to see where we can go next, right? Whether that's, um, you know, exploring a new platform or a different type of technology or an incorporating something additional into what you're already doing in marketing. There's, there's all sorts of options, right? But paying attention to the culture and, and trends and things like that, I, I, I would say are also important. Um, is, is there going to be a Landopia bot for 2024? Nah, not yet. No, I think we're looking at a few different directions outside of the, the AI world. But um, I guess the last thing that, that hasn't been mentioned surprisingly is, is the 12 week year, right? Like that's how we run the coaching program. It's all based on the, the theme of, of the 12 week year. So as we're thinking about those goals, we're not just looking at the next 12 months. We're looking at the next 12 weeks times four, right? As we approach that new year. So that's what I would add. Absolutely. Absolutely. To, uh, to finish it off, the cherry on top of goal setting in the last podcast of 2023, the big papa, Tate Litchfield. Wow. Uh, hard to add much more than that. I mean, that's look, why it's terrible to go last. Uh, yeah. It's, like, 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 like dude, buddy was like, why am I going first? No, going last is the worst. <laughs> look, I'll say this. I echo what every one of my good friends mentioned about goal setting. I think the biggest mistake you can make when it comes to goal setting is not setting any goals. I think that's a mistake that people often make. They want to make improvements in their lives, but they never put pen to paper, right? And any change, no matter how small it is, takes a starting point. And for most of us, that start point is, January 1st, when we implement a new strategy, when we decide we're going to tackle a new pain point, when we're going to go after a new county or increase our marketing or improve something. But it started days and weeks before that with sitting down in a quiet room, reflecting on what we've done, and then looking at where we want to be, visualizing our future and asking ourselves, how do I make this a reality? So setting goals is something that is cliche. I hate that it's in, you know, people run around with your New Year's resolutions. I don't set New Year's resolutions. I don't like to do that. These are 12 week year goals that we implement. And then we hold ourselves accountable. Uh, that's the other thing that I'd say about setting goals is when you achieve those goals, celebrate. If you fail, welcome to the club. Hold yourself accountable. Ask yourself why ask yourself how you can approve. And the last thing that I'd add on goals is dream big people. Don't limit yourself by, well, last year we grew by this much. So next year we're going to grow by a little bit more than that. No, blow it up. Go big. Try hard. You're going to learn something, right? I don't know. That's my thoughts on goals. Yeah, I, no, I I, I, I I, really love what everybody said. And, you know, Eric even mentioned like, um, you know, this is a great time to appreciate your team and, and bonus your team and express gratitude to your team. And because look, this is a team effort. And if you're just new to the land business, it's okay. You're in a land job, but that's not the goal. Ultimately you want a land business that grows 
without you doing anything. Essentially, you want to build that passive income machine so you can work when you want, where you want, and with whom you want. And I think it's it's great to also look back at your year and look at where did your energy go? Were you doing something that wasn't in your zone of genius? And if you were, well, that's a good place to start to delegate and outsource. And so that you can spend that time doing what only you uniquely are capable of doing the best of doing. And in the beginning, it might just be, you might be best at learning this, right? And getting your reps in, but getting your reps in with the idea and the goal of, okay, I don't love due diligence, but now I know it enough to get out of it. I don't love intake, but now I know it enough to get out of it. And, you know, to, to Tate's point, right? Dream big, dream really big and have, but with flexibility and, and know that, you know, things change, technology changes, the market changes and your goals will change and it's okay. Right. And to, you know, enjoy the journey and look back and see how far you've come I know I'm guilty of this. I think we're all guilty of it where we look back at our year and we think we could have done so much more instead of looking and saying, oh my gosh, look what I accomplished. Because if you think back to what you're doing now, to what you were doing you know, a year, two, five, 10 years ago, if you're like me, if you told me, what, if you told me 20 years ago, I'd be where I am now with my time, energy, money, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I've got life licked. Do I personally feel like I have life licked? Absolutely not. I want to do more. I want to grow even more. But it's so important, especially this year, time of year, to reflect and go back. So I'm glad that we, we, we you know, went and talked about it. And uh, I hope you are getting some good tidbits, dear listener, pearls of wisdom to go with momentum into 2024. But that being said, we've got our tip of the week. Landon, I know Landon's like, wait, Kirk's new now. I'm on the round table. Shouldn't, shouldn't Kirk be doing the uh, the tip of the week? But I didn't know Kirk was going to be on until the last minute. So Kirk, if you have a tip of the week, give Landon the break. But if not, we still got to tap Landon on, the, on his broad shoulder. I mean, I could always give a tip because, you know, I've been I've been piling them up ever since I joined the Landy community. So I got like hundreds. I got a backlog. <laughs> all, all right. Well, you got it. Okay. Well, actually, I, I'll give the tip that uh that I that I gave you, Mark, the the prompt engineer. Uh, yes. So so um, my brother in law, brilliant guy, um, gave me this tip. He's really deep into AI, and uh, there is a prompt that you can use with Chat GTP that actually helps you engineer a better prompt. So it creates this conversation back and forth with you and the, and the AI where you, you give it your initial prompt, then you give it some context a little bit, and you'd like it can really be a terrible prompt. And by the time you're done, it will, it will ask you questions so that you can give it better context. It will rewrite the prompt for you, and then it will rate the prompt itself and ask you if you want to keep going. And you can just keep going for as long as you want. I, I, and I think I told you this, so I recently got married and I actually used this prompt to, for us to write our wedding vows. And I thought, eh, you know, it's not really going to work. By the time I was done, Corinne and I like had tears. <laughs> we couldn't wait to say it to each other. So it really, really does work for, you know, whether it's something that you're trying to engineer or whether it's something that's emotional and close for you, like the... The AI is really powerful and uh, there are ways that you can use it to leverage its power to make it even more powerful for you. And this this prompt for a prompt is is one of those ways. So. Yeah. So I've I've played with the prompt. I absolutely love it. It's it is a it is a really cool prompt. It's long. And so, you know, we'll we'll have a link to it uh in in the show notes. But I highly recommend everyone play with it. If if you just want the easy button on prompt engineering, there's the chat GPT plugins and you could just go prompt engineer. But this one I think is, is way better because you are having a dialogue and a back and forth 
with your AI overlord. So it's very geeky. Very okay. Geeky. We're we're still the overlord, <laughs> but I'm just saying I'm always very nice to the AI, just in case. You have to be. Uh, you you don't know where the AI is going to be and what it's going to do in ten years. You you better be nice. Its memory's yeah. longer than ours. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I want to thank the listeners. Just a little reminder, today's podcast was sponsored by Flight School. Go to landgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a call, and learn how to start building that passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents. Um, if you're getting value, please rate, review, and uh, follow the podcast. Follow, rate, review the podcast, and send a screenshot of that review. Support at thelanggeek.com and we will actually be sending you an audiobook the dirt rich audiobook uh for free so if you're listening to a podcast we figure you're listening to an audiobook there you go so please do it it really helps and uh it'll motivate kirk to keep giving out amazing geeky mm-hmm. tips of the week and landon will be signing a huge uh sigh of relief that he won't have to do it every week so great all right uh are we good we ready to do this one two three let's Uh, let freedom 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 ring ring. 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 all right i've got i've got a quick ethical question for you guys based on kirk's thing you're writing a very heartfelt you know say (laughs) birthday card anniversary (laughs) card right is it not heartfelt if you're using AI to help you? That's correct. It's not heartfelt. I, I, I wouldn't want Landon to tell me you I was going to say, let me <laughs> take that back. I mean, Kirk, Kirk I, honestly, I mean, like when you told me, like you guys wrote your vows with, with AI, I, I thought it was like the coolest, me. geekiest thing. And and you're like, you're like here's a stream. Like, I could imagine, like, if I wrote you know, someone's card like like that, they'd be like, wait, did you write that? Or did uh-huh. AI? Well, what's amazing about it is that like you give it everything, right? So I had to give it, I gave it our history. I gave it the tone that I was looking for. I gave it the context of our relationship. I gave it the context of, of how I wanted the vials to sound. So all of the raw material came from me and I decided, and then we went through several iterations, right? And Corinne was there with we actually like we sat and looked at it together. And when it came out, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> this is this is way more heartfelt than I could write. And I'm not bad. I got pretty good. I mean, I got, I got, I got, I got married. So, you know, I got no, no, no. I, I'm just curious. Like, 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 dude, buddy, Aaron writes you a card for your birthday, and it's clear AI wrote it. I mean, oh. <laughs> She would never do that. She's she's so good at that stuff, the cards and whatnot. Like she does not need to sit down at a computer. I need to sit down at a computer, yeah. but <laughs> she would she would appreciate the, the fact if I'm on a weekly AI card schedule, she would appreciate that. And, and appreciate it's like it. if Kurt, oh, she would definitely appreciate it. So I think as long as you are sitting down at the computer and you are giving it your feelings, your input, what you desire to come out of this thing. Right, it's partly your voice. It's not like it's uh, like it might even be better than the that you know those cards that you get. You go to Hallmark, right, and you pick up the long narrative card saying, "Oh, you're so amazing because because of this, that, and the other thing." The AI stuff might even be a little bit more unique to your situation. So, I, I kind of well, like it. Look, look, Tate's Tate is actually rethinking his position hey, on this now. I am think about this. We hoon out how as much as we can. Great presidents who've given great speeches didn't write their speeches. Yeah. I was also gonna say, didn't didn't some guy somebody get in trouble on the internet because he he messed up and then he wrote an apology and it was just AI generated apology. He just like went to AI and said, Hey, I need to write an apology note. And <laughs> somebody copied it and put it into some sort of filter. And it was like, Hey, chat GPT wrote this. You're not really sorry. <laughs> I think I agree with Scott Bosman here. Like if I were to, it would go a long way. I think I'd be okay. As long as I took the time, it's the thought that counts, right? Like that's. It, it right. is. I think, yeah, I think to, to Scott's point, yeah, and Kirk's point, like, 
if you're giving it the raw material and Scott's like, look, I mean, look, I used to go to Hallmark all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I, I actually, you know, write my own cards now and just because I like to do it. But back in the day, it was, you know, I would spend time like like a, a, quite a bit of time going through the just trying to find the perfect card. And when you find it, even though it's not your writing, it's that effort, I think, that counts. Uh for sure. So Sony, if you're listening to this, Eric is probably going to be cool with a, you know, a really nice chat GPT Christmas card, as long as it, you know, it mentions tonal, Peloton, grilling, you know, being a dad, uh, you know, being handy around the house. And of course, you know, being an, an amazing, uh, you know, land investor. That's probably number one. And then number two would be great husband and father. So, you know, there you go. All Context right. Context matters. <laughs> Context matters. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.